Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this, and this is a video that's long overdue, but luckily a, a, a user or a, a subscriber of mine sent me a link on Facebook. Thank you Jacob, I have read it, it is interesting and that's why I'm sharing it with you. It's currently on Reddit, I don't know how Reddit works, um, so I don't know that who to quote and who to thank for this beautiful article or post or whatever it is. Um, but I'm going to leave a link and we're going to read through it, and the reason I'm reading through it is because a lot of you missed, completely missed the point of my last video, and that was when I was reading my thoughts out aloud. So Christ only knows how you would go with trying to formulate your own opinion after reading things, but I figured I would read it out loud for you guys anyway. Um, and some food for thought, right? Um, again, this whole thing is about all the Xbox One's problems that you guys have issues with, like used games, DRM, first-party games, renting games, so forth and so on. Um, but I think it's interesting that Sony have not put any official response to what about third-party games? Maybe it's third-party games such as EA Activision that are saying, well, we want these kind of things and that's why Xbox has done it, but we haven't really heard PlayStation side. We've only heard that this will not happen or this will happen for PlayStation 4 first-party. And it's also interesting to note that Sony own the patent to banning used games. Not just having used games as a kind of a derelict thing where, yeah, you can go through all these hurdles if you want. Banning them. And because they own the patent and they own the PlayStation 4 legally, they could implement that day one, six months down the track, or the day it dies. So just keep that as food for thought. Again, we haven't got any official response on third-party DRM or the lack of it on Sony, so I thought that I would tell you guys that. Now, everyone go and open the article in the link. Um, I'm going to quote this dude again. I don't know how Reddit works, so I can't quote. I can't tell you who the author is. I think his name is Self. Xbox. Well, oh no, submitted five days ago by Fuckver. So I'm assuming this is Fuckver's post. Um, and I quote. Now I'm going to throw in my opinion uh, in a little bit, but most of it will just be direct quotes. And a lot of this post is direct quotes or paraphrasing from Microsoft officials or Microsoft themselves. Anyway. So, these, this is pretty much the truth, but before we get started, who can we blame that all these lies and misinformation is being shouted about the Xbox One? I think everyone is to blame. I think it's the users and the, the general public that don't do their own research and or just, just believe anything that IGN or game trailers or whatever tells them. Um, two, it's obviously Microsoft. Microsoft's the biggest fault for not communicating things properly. They did a shit job at communicating what these features are and why we need them. And it's the media's fault for just blatantly lying, and Game, game Inform is a perfect example of it, and I called them on it. They were posting blatant lies on their Facebook a few, a few days ago. It's ridiculous. So this is pretty much the truth, and again, some of this is this dude's opinion, but I'll, I'll quote you his opinion when it's relevant. Um, so let's get started. First topic we'll hit on is used games. So I quote, one of the Xbox One's main feature is the ability to install the disc directly to the hard drive and play it without the disc. Now he goes on to say, and I agree, that correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a feature many of us ask for when installing games was added to the 360. So what he means there is that a lot of us, when the, the thing came around, were, oh, we can install our games to the 360, or why do we have to put the disc in if it's installed? That will hint on a little bit later. So... Contrary to the popular belief, the used game does exist on the Xbox One. This is a quote. Trade in and resell your disc-based games. Today, some gamers choose to sell their old disc-based games back for cash and credit. We designed Xbox One so game publishers can enable you to trade in your games at participating retailers. Microsoft does not charge a platform fee to retailers, publishers, or consumers for enabling transfer of these games. So what that means is they want to take a little bit more of the power away from GameStop, EB Games, and whatever. And I think every gamer can agree, the less power those shysters have, the better we all will be. So again, they've did a poor job of telling us that, but I continue. So... Uh, fuck that goes on to exp expand. What can we take away from this? Easy. If you bought a disc-based game and sell and trade, you, oh, I'm, I'm not good at reading. I haven't got my glasses on. I apologize. I will start again. What can we take away from this? Easy. If you bought a disc-based game, you can sell and trade it to any participating retailer. It means that game publishers will work out, de work out deals with retailers in order for the developers and publishers to take a cut of used game sales. Microsoft will not receive any money from these transactions. If you bought a digital copy, copy, just like any digital copy, you will not be able to do this. So again, what I just reiterated, 
Um, they're trying to take a little bit less power away from the uh, the actual game retailers, which is always a good thing. Now, what about first-party games? We know that Sony haven't got any of this crap for their first-party games, so what's Microsoft's official stance on their first-party games in terms of this DRM and used game situation? And I quote, In our role as a game publisher, Microsoft Studios will enable you to give your games to friends or trade in your Xbox One games at participating retailers. Third-party publishers may opt in or opt out of supporting game resale and may set up business terms or transfer fees with retailers. Microsoft does not receive any compensation as part of this. In addition, third-party publishers can enable you to give games to friends, loaning or renting games won't be available at launch, but we are exploring the possibilities with our partners. So again, there you go. It's a pretty shitty thing, but it's nowhere near as bad as people are making it out to be. Now, renting games. Obviously, they've just said that it won't be available at launch, but they are currently working with their partners. So let's go on. Now, why do we have DRM? Why does it have to connect to the internet every 24 hours? And I believe the dude who wrote this uh, post has a brilliant explanation. As we And I quote from him, As we saw above, you will be able to install your games to your hard drive and have your entire library to play without putting the disc in the tray. This is why the 24-hour check is required. Without this, many copy of the same game could be installed into multiple Xbox Ones, and it would be absolute, and it would absolutely crumble game sales. So there you go. That's a completely understandable reason. That's why they have to do it if that's what they're trying to do. Does that make sense? Okay. Now we continue into the privacy thing that everyone's been complaining about. This is, and I quote from the dude who wrote the article, this is one of the biggest things people have been complaining about. Microsoft has already addressed the issue, but of course it fell on deaf ears. People already had their put pitchforks out and had Sony on a pedestal at this point. Now this is a direct quote from Microsoft themselves. And I quote, You are in control of when Kinect sensing is on, off, or pause. If you don't want the Kinect sensor on while playing games or enjoying your entertainment, you can pause Kinect. To turn off your Xbox One, just say Xbox off. When the system is off, it's only listening for the single voice command Xbox One. And you can turn that feature off too. Some apps and games may require Kinect function functionality to operate, so you'll need to turn it back on for these experiences. That's Microsoft's official quote. A uh, quote from the dude who wrote the article once again. As I've stated before, you will have you will have the control to, to everything that the Kinect has to offer. If you don't want it to hear you, you can do just that. If you don't want it to see you, you can do that. Don't want to listen to Xbox One while it's off? You can also do that as well. So I suppose that this is a trust game, and if you're that paranoid, you can do what I'm probably going to do and wrap the fucking thing in duct tape, and you'll be right. What's any different to having a webcam? What's any different to having a built-in webcam? What's any different to having a mobile phone? What's any different to having a computer? These are all ways and avenues that people can hack into your life regardless so you trust them why is it so hard to trust microsoft on this opinion but again they've done a shitty job at explaining things and people have done a shitty job at reporting them and people have done a shitty job at understanding what microsoft is trying to say now we get in to the big one xbox one a game of circles is what he's written now again this is quotes from him so i'm going to quote him now now on to the other things. As some of us know, you will be able to have a circle of friends. Ten people to be exact that will be able to access your game library from anywhere. At any time. This is of course how things work now. Two of your friends can't play the game at the same time from one disc on two separate consoles. I don't understand what that means. However, Microsoft go on to... Uh, could you go on to explain it? And I will quote Microsoft. Give your family access to your entire game's library anytime, anywhere. Xbox One will enable new forms of access for families. Up to 10 members of your family can log in and play from your shared game's library on any Xbox One. Just like today, a family member can play your copy of Forza Motorsport at a friend's house. Only now, they will not just... They will see not just Forza but all of your shared games. You can always play your games, and any one of your family members can be playing from your shared library at any given time. There you go. 
So again, I quote the dude to put it in better words than I probably could. He goes on to say, I absolutely love this feature. For example, my cousin is 200 miles away when he's away at college and I've let him borrow L.A. Noir and Dead Rising. I've yet to receive those games from him. With this feature, we don't have to be close in order for him to borrow any of my games. So essentially what it is, if you have him as a friend or a family member, he can be on his Xbox One and with your details, he can play your games because they're saved into the cloud and they're saved onto a hard drive. So you just rip it from the cloud during using your details, and play it. Isn't that awesome? How is that? That is how you rent games. If you have these close friends, you trust them enough, and say, hey, you f I've got Forza, I'm not playing it anymore. Oh, you want to borrow it? Well, you don't have to take my physical copy. You don't have to come over. We don't even have to talk to each other. Yay for no social interaction. And you can just play it. It's a pretty cool feature. These are the cool features that people don't understand how they're working. And these are the kind of features that need some kind of DRM or, to, or, or protection to make sure they're not being abused and cheated by other people. So, let's continue. Giving away games. Alright, giving away games. <clears throat> I will quote this dude. Do you have a game that you will no longer play? Your friend can still play it off your Xbox, if they're in your circle. What if they're not? As long as they have been in your friend's list for 30 days, you can give a game away to your friend free of charge. This can only be done once per copy. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's a good thing. Um, but, uh, we, again, with what we've just talked about, with having up to 10 people that can just access your complete game library at any given time, then why do you need to give games to people? Um, I, can, I don't know. Like, I don't give my games to... I let people borrow my games, like, all the time, but I don't give games to people. So, and if I do, then it'd be pretty rude of them to give it to someone else, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? You guys... I'm, but I think... I don't think that's a good thing. I think that's a pretty shitty thing. Um, and again, we're going to Xbox Live Gold. Again, this is not a quote from Microsoft, just this dude who has actually understood what Microsoft is trying to say. I'm impressed. Okay, and I quote, The big change in the Xbox Live system is the feature to allow all users on one console to have gold just by one user having it. For example, if I have Xbox Live and my brothers also use the same console, they will all... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> they will also be able to use all perks of a gold account. They will have access to all the games on the console, even if it was installed through my account. Now, that's pretty awesome. If you have a big family, so you have like four kids, and you don't want to have to buy $400 worth of gold every year, one account, one account has gold, everyone has gold. I mean, that's genius. How can people complain about that? There's also a long paragraph here about the Xbox Connect. I'm not going to go into that because I don't care, but feel free to read it. Please go and check out this link. I mean, people really need to understand what the truth is and not what their friends are saying or what Facebook is saying. And so if you're interested in all, go and have a read, go and have a look. Um, cause again, I might've stuttered a little bit cause I'm not the best at reading words. Very good. Um, so tell me what you guys think until next time, rate, comment and subscribe. I'm out. Au revoir.